In the heart of New York City, underneath the enormous flashing screens of Times Square, a crowd of several hundred people gathered to watch as one ton of ivory was crushed into dust. The dramatic event was part of an effort by U.S. officials to highlight the problem of illegal ivory sales and the relentless slaughter of African elephants. In recent years, the killing of elephants for the ivory and their tusks has escalated to unprecedented levels. Between 2011 and 2014, more than 100,000 African elephants were killed for their ivory, roughly 20% of the total population in just three years. That amounts to about 34,000 elephants killed each year, or about one elephant every 15 minutes. If the wholesale slaughter continues at its current rate, the entire African elephant population could be wiped out in less than 10 years. And yet many people throughout the U.S. are unaware of the problem, which is why officials held the ivory crushing in the nation's largest city at a very public event. The ivory crushing was planned jointly by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Wildlife Conservation Society. In a speech at the event, John Calvelli of the Conservation Society stated, Crushing ivory in Times Square, literally at the crossroads of the world, says in the clearest of terms that the U.S. is serious about closing its illegal ivory markets and stopping the demand. Other speakers included Dan Ash, director of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Sally Jewell, Secretary of the Interior, New York Congressman Steve Israel, and New York Congresswoman Grace May. In one of the more memorable lines from the day, Secretary Jewell stated, Today's ivory crush will send a very clear message to the world. We're not only crushing ivory, we're crushing the bloody ivory market. She added, If we want our grandchildren and their children to grow up in a world where they can see elephants in the wild, we owe it to them to shut down the market. The crowd cheered, and some onlookers held up signs that read, 96 elephants are killed every day. Take a stand. The event was held on Friday, June 19th, just one week before the White House is expected to issue new regulations to crack down on the ivory trade. U.S. officials have also begun coordinating efforts with countries like Tanzania, Botswana, China, and Peru, where the ivory trade is at its worst. At the same time, Congress is currently considering a new law that would impose harsher penalties for people selling ivory. The law would also send more assistance to Africa, where the battle against poachers is being fought on a daily basis. As several speakers noted, the issue is about more than just elephants. In many cases, the money made through the illegal ivory trade is used to fund crime syndicates and terrorist organizations such as Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, and even the genocidal Janjaweed militants in Darfur. Animal trafficking is funding dangerous groups out there, Congressman Steve Israel said in his speech. It is a source of revenue for terrorist groups around the world. After about one hour of public speeches, the crowd burst into applause as officials fired up the large industrial rock crusher and the ivory destruction began. Much of the ivory brought to the event came from a 2009 raid on an art store in Philadelphia. The owner was sentenced to two and a half years in prison and fined more than $150,000, one of the toughest sentences ever handed down for a wildlife-related crime. Although some people feel overwhelmed by the sheer number of elephants being slaughtered, one of the major points of the day is that what we do matters. For instance, when the international ban on ivory was first initiated in 1989, it was successful beyond expectations. For nearly 10 years, the ivory trade was just about completely shut down. Elephant populations throughout Africa made a huge comeback, with many populations actually doubling in size. In fact, it was only after loopholes in the law were introduced in 1999 and 2008 that the situation began to spiral downward again and poaching resurfaced as a major issue. If the laws are tightened up again and enforcement becomes a real priority, activists argue that it's not too late to make a huge impact and to save the African elephant from extinction. One of the key issues is to raise awareness among the public so people stop buying ivory and pressure their governments to take action. When New Jersey recently passed strict state laws against the sale of ivory in 2014, it sparked a wave of similar actions in states throughout the U.S. 
Today, a total of 12 states have introduced similar laws to crack down on the ivory trade, and efforts are underway in six additional states to take legislative action. There is no question that as awareness grows, the movement against ivory is becoming stronger and stronger. Even in China, the world's largest consumer of ivory, attitudes are starting to change dramatically. A recent report found that an unprecedented 95% of people surveyed in China say they now support a ban on ivory. Today, despite the devastation that has taken place, there is a growing sense of commitment to the cause in countries throughout the world, and a new sense of hope that the elephants and their allies will eventually win the day.